Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and in this video I'm going to introduce all six of Jane Austen's main novels and then give you some advice on which ones I think that you should start with if you're not familiar with her work. It's Pride and Prejudice. You should start with Pride and Prejudice. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Okay, so there's a little bit more to this video than that. I will focus on two novels in particular that I think are great works to start with and I'll briefly outline the other four as well. Jane Austen wrote much more than just the six novels that make up her main canon, if you will. There is plenty of juvenilia and unfinished works, but only six of her novels were actually published during or shortly after her lifetime. And this video will focus on just those six. They were published between 1811 and 1818, although some of the novels were written much earlier in the 1790s. I'm going to get straight to the point and say again that if you've not read any Jane Austen, you should start with Pride and Prejudice. I know, hot take, right? But there is a reason why this novel is her most famous, her most referenced and her most adapted work. In the chronology of Jane Austen novels, Pride and Prejudice is the second, published in 1813. It is mostly known as one of the great romances, but really there is so much more to the book than just the admittedly pretty spectacular romance plot. What makes this book so well suited for a first time Jane Austen reader, and maybe even someone who's new to classics in general, is that we all know the basic plot of the story. The book follows 20 year old Elizabeth Bennet, the second of five daughters of a country gentleman. She has all the qualities that modern day readers love in the heroine of a novel. She's witty and intelligent and stubborn with plenty of bad qualities to balance out the good. Elizabeth Bennet is a young woman who's trying to find a comfortable place in a world that's really set against her. As the second of five daughters, she is expected to make a financially advantageous marriage since she or her sisters won't be able to inherit their father's estate. She's also constantly put in awkward situations by her sometimes embarrassing family members, her over-the-top mother whose only goal in life is to see her daughters married, her younger sisters who all try to attract attention and recognition in different ways, her ridiculous cousin and potential suitor, Mr. Collins. Let's just say that Elizabeth has enough on her hands trying to navigate life with her own family. Then, of course, a rich bachelor moves into the neighborhood. Mr. Bingley is young, rich and single and therefore the perfect target for Mrs. Bennet's attempts to get her daughters married. Luckily, the eldest daughter, Jane, seems to have a liking for the man. His friend Mr. Darcy, however, is less well received in the neighborhood. Although he is very rich and not bad looking, he's also rude and awkward. Of course, we know how this turns out in the end. Trying to summarize this novel beyond the basic romantic plot is almost impossible for me. Even though it's not a long book, just under 300 pages in the Penguin edition that I have, there are so many storylines that are masterfully woven together. And that's another aspect that makes this book so well suited for a first time Austen reader. You might know about Lizzie Bennet and Mr. Darcy, but do you know what happened to Georgiana Darcy or what's going on with Charlotte Lucas? This book is made up of a large and wonderfully crafted host of characters, all of which have some connection to each other, there's this amazing mind map of personal relationships in Pride and Prejudice that you can find on the Wikipedia page for Pride and Prejudice. I'm not going to show it here because it does contain spoilers, but if you are familiar with the book, I suggest looking that up just to see how everyone in the story is linked and connected to one another. So even though someone new to Austen might know the basic plot line of the book, there is still so much more to discover and that makes for a pretty fantastic reading experience because you can't get lost in the plot or the archaic writing style, but you also don't get bored with the book because there is so much to discover. Pride and Prejudice is, in my opinion, the best Austen work, full stop. 
It's very tightly plotted, beautifully written with a lot of humor and character and some wonderful observations on how people interact with each other. The social commentary in Austen's work has always fascinated me and although Pride and Prejudice is set in a slightly whitewashed world without real poverty and misery, this is still a book that we can relate to in modern times. All of the characters in Pride and Prejudice are so, so human and I love every single one of them, even Lady Catherine de Bourgh. Just so this doesn't derail into a Pride and Prejudice love fest, let me give you another recommendation for which of Jane Austen's books to pick if you don't want to read Pride and Prejudice. For example, you might want to start with a book that you don't know anything about. Like I mentioned earlier, everyone knows at least some of the plot of Pride and Prejudice, and if you prefer to go into a classic more unspoiled, I would recommend starting with Emma. Uh, one modern adaptation of Emma that you might be familiar with is the 90s film Clueless, but that is a very loose adaptation. So even if you have seen Clueless, the plot of Emma will still be very new to you. Emma has many of the same elements as Pride and Prejudice, a uh, fantastically well outlined main character, a large collective of supporting characters, romance, mystery, intrigue, social commentary, family politics, some dodgy clerics and a whole lot of humour. This story centres around a young lady called Emma Woodhouse, who unlike Elizabeth Bennet is financially stable and well off and is really the head of her household since the only other occupant is her elderly and ailing father. Emma gets bored very easily so she spends her time matchmaking and coming up with various schemes to get her friends and acquaintances married. She herself is not all that interested in dating. Of course her plans don't quite work out the way she intended and throughout the story you see her comfortable world unraveling as she learns to take responsibility for her actions. Emma is a lot longer than Pride and Prejudice and not quite as tightly written. Other than that, the two books feel very similar in their ratio of humor to mystery to romance. So definitely a great place to start if you prefer not to go with the mainstream option. Now let me briefly talk you through the other four Jane Austen novels. One of them is one that I reckon you could also start with if you've not read any other Jane Austen before, and that is Northanger Abbey. This is the story of a completely average girl named Catherine Morland and her big holiday, first to Bath and then to the countryside. In the course of the book, she learns to distinguish real friends from fake friends and figures out why she doesn't really want her life to be a gothic novel. I mention Northanger Abbey as a decent option to begin with because it's short, simple, very funny. However, it lacks the complexities and the emotional impact of her other novels. Good option if you are after a fun and light read, but not if you want to discover the masterful way that Jane Austen can craft a novel. Persuasion is often considered her most advanced masterpiece and it is a really gorgeous book and one that differs a lot from the other five. The protagonist in this is in her late 20s, positively an old maid in those days, and the book has a much more serious and melancholy tone dealing with lost opportunities and past regrets. However, if you're new to Austen, I would read a different book first and then get to Persuasion once you feel more comfortable with her style. Sense and Sensibility. This is a book that I am very attached to, even though objectively it's not that great. The book follows two sisters, Eleanor and Marianne, who have to move to a countryside cottage with their impoverished family and deals with their various romances. I think that often when we discuss Sense and Sensibility, a recollection of the book is tinted by the wonderful 1990s Oscar winning adaptation of it, which turned a rather messy, original plot into a very well-crafted film. I would only recommend that you pick up Sense and Sensibility as your first Austen novel if you really love the film and you want to explore the original. And finally, we get to the one Austen book I really don't like and that's Mansfield Park. 
I should say that many people love this book, so you really should not take my opinion as the only one. Mansfield Park follows young Fanny Price, a child from a poor family who grows up at her rich uncle's country house. The book follows her over the course of years into adolescence and adulthood as she struggles to find her place in this world of the rich. I disliked the book mainly because I disliked the main character. I found her too quiet and passive, but like I said, many people enjoyed exactly that aspect of the book. So use your own judgment on that. This was my roundup of the six main Austen novels, and I hope this has helped you to choose which one of her books to pick up first. I have in the past done separate review videos for two of her books and that's Persuasion and Northanger Abbey and you can find both of them linked in the description box if you're interested. Please let me know in the comments which Austen novel you would recommend for someone to start out with who's new to her books and also tell me which of her books are your favorites and least favorites. I can't wait to get a discussion going in the comments on this fantastic author and her amazing work. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.